If you've worked with the matrix visual in Power BI, you've probably noticed it's a little bit tricky to work with, especially when you have text-based data. What normally happens is it's very difficult to get the groupings to display exactly what you want, as well as the subtotals at the bottom of the matrix. We're gonna go through a bunch of tricks today to get the matrix to show precisely what you want it to show. So you can have it show blank when you expand a field. So for example, if I expand this project and look at the tasks under it, the task count is showing blank at the task level because it would just be one all the way down the column if it were using the same measure. We also have a couple of text columns here. So I have a bucket for our tasks that's showing a value when the project is expanded, but it's not showing a value when we're at the project level because that wouldn't make sense there. This column here is showing the project manager at the project level and the comma separated assignees at the task level. And then we have a link column here. And this link column is linking directly to the project in planner. When we have these fields collapsed, when we have them expanded, it's linking directly to a task. The hyperlink is different for these, not that you can see it when I hover on it, but you get the idea. And then at the bottom here, our grand total is showing blank for the things we want it to show blank for. So grand total level, it's showing blank for the things we want it to show blank for. By default, it's going to show a value for every single field if you have it turned on, but we can control what it's showing for specific fields in our data. So this data set is premium planner data. We made this in a prior video. I'll link to that in the description if anybody wants it. If you're using standard planner, your fields are gonna be different. So don't just copy and paste the measures, okay? Update your references. So I'm gonna start a new page here and drop in a matrix visual. I'm gonna drop project name in the rows and task name underneath it so that we get an expansion effect. So if I just drop a text field into the values well here, because I'm trying to say show a bucket name or a task status or whatever attached to my row, it takes the first value in that field and applies it to the top level of our grouping, which doesn't make any sense. We want this to be blank at the project level and not blank at the task level when you expand it down. So let's take that out and I'm gonna go to new measure. So for the name of this measure, I put the word matrix in it because this measure is only going to be used in the matrix. I don't want people using it anywhere else. I wanna make that super clear. So we're gonna do an if statement here and this if statement is gonna check and see what the person has expanded in the matrix. So we're gonna say if is in scope. So is in scope and you give it the field name that you care about. So I wanna say if we've expanded the matrix to the task name and then show one thing, if we haven't show another thing. So I'm gonna put our task name in here, close the parentheses and then do a comma. And I want this to show the bucket name. But the thing is, is that the bucket name is a field. It's not a scalar value. So we need to basically just get the first value in that field. There's only ever gonna be one value when you're at the task name level, but we need to tell Power BI to get that single value. So we're just going to give it a minimum. So get the min bucket name, close the parentheses, and then do a comma and blank. So this blank is going to be what gets returned if that first condition is not met. And then close our parentheses. If you have a bunch of different levels for these conditions, you can do a switch statement instead of an if statement. I only have two, so I'm using if. So now if we drop this into the matrix, did you see what just happened there? So because we are at the project level and this measure is returned, turning blank, it's hidden all over data. So what we need to do is go to one of our row fields here. I'm gonna to go to this top one and then select show items with no data. So now if we expand one of these, you can see that it's showing the bucket name at the task level and at the top level, it's not. So that's the behavior we want. So since we've been super specific about our measure name, if we don't wanna confuse our users, we can take the word matrix out of this measure inside the visual, just double click it to rename it. So now let's do an example for when we want to show a different value at one level versus another and the technique is very similar. So let's look at the date modified. For the last modified date, the concept is going to be really similar. So we're going to use is in scope again to check which level we're at when we run the calculation. I'm going to use a switch this time just to show people who are unfamiliar with the switch how it works. So we're going to do switch and then true comma and then we're going to check if we're in scope. So is in scope task name. If we're at the task name level, we just want it to return the last modified date, but we need to use some kind of expression to get that value. I'm just going to use max. We're only ever going to have one modified date, so it doesn't really matter what we use. We could use min or max modified date. So there's our first condition. For our second condition, we want to check and see if we're at the project level. And when you're checking for these levels, you're just typing in the name of the field that you 
you have inserted in your matrix. So for the project level, we want this to return the maximum modified date for any task under that project. Now this is planner data and planner data actually already has a measure for last modified date that's on the project table, but we're going to pretend that doesn't exist for the sake of example and get it from the tasks table because projects is related to tasks. So we're going to do a calculate and we want to get the maximum modified date again. And now what we want this to do is to ignore any filters that the user has applied, because if they're filtering on status or bucket or whatever, that doesn't change the start and end date for the project, okay? So we're gonna do all to remove filters, and we want all tasks, and then we need to add back in the filters we want it to keep using, which is the project level filter. So I'm gonna use keep filters, on the project that's selected. Then close our parentheses. If you have more levels in your hierarchy and you need to do more is in scopes, you just add a comma and then keep going and going until you get to the end. The last line in the switch statement lets you catch everything else. I have a tendency to just use blank here, so it checks the conditions. If it doesn't find a condition that matches, then it returns blank. All right, so now if I drop this in the matrix, this one is a bad example because these were all modified on the same date. Let me open a different one. Okay, so this one's got different dates. You can see that this project level one is showing the maximum from the tasks underneath it. So it's rolling up and we can rename this if we want to. Let's do another quick one with conditional formatting. So I'm going to do the overdue tasks. This one is going to return blank at the task level, not blank at the project level. So same thing again, if is in scope task name, then blank because we don't want it to show for the task name, otherwise return some measure. So I'm going to do the count of overdue tasks, which I have a measure for. That one's just a count rows with a filter on it. So now if I add this to the matrix, we have a number. We can, if we want to conditionally format this, go to the measure in the values well, click it, go to conditional formatting, icons. And I'm going to do something tricky for this. I'm not going to use the measure that the column is showing to conditionally format it because that one is returning blank at the task level and I still want to show an icon there. So I need some number to key on. I'm just going to select my measure that's a count of overdue tasks generally, not the one that I'm using in the matrix that selectively returns blank. And I'm going to use that for the formatting instead. So choose your style. Where did the filled red flag go? I swear there was a filled red flag. I don't see it in here. We're going to go with the unfilled red flag. I'm going to put it to the right of the data and I only want it to show a flag when something is overdue. So I'm just going to remove those extra conditions and we're going to say if the value is a number greater than or equal to one and less than, we have to put something in here. I kind of struggle with what to do with this. I'm going to say less than 9,000 something. And then we show a flag. So this is going to be returning one, basically, if a task is overdue. I'm going to click OK. So you can see that the overdue tasks have a flag. When I go up to the project level, it's showing a count of the tasks that are overdue and the flag, and then a total at the bottom. So same exact concept for the project manager as we've been doing. We check if the task name is in scope. If it is in scope, we get the value for our concatenated assignees. This is a calculated column on my tasks table. The formula for it looked like, oh, wow, that's messy. I should probably format this, but it's using concatenate X to concatenate the assignee names from our assignees table onto our tasks table. So that went into here. Minimum is just getting the scalar value. It's not actually a minimum of anything. So same thing with the project name. This one I'm wrapping the minimum around a calculate because it's getting that value from a related table. So it likes the calculate there to force the relationship context. Drop that in the table. So at this point, consider whether you want to to disable word wrap. If you're using a data bar conditional formatting, it looks really bad if your row height drops to two lines when you're showing long text, it makes the bar really tall and it looks weird. So I have a tendency to turn word wrap off when I'm using the data bars. It's under the settings, I guess it's called text wrap. So you can disable that if you want that behavior. That'll basically just do an ellipses when it expands past a certain point instead of dropping down to a new line. And next up, is the hyperlink. So this one, same concept. I'm using a little bit of a different technique here just to show options. So I'm using variables this time. So we have two variables, one for the project link and one for the task link. And then we have an expression that gets that particular value. 
So my project link is on my projects table. It's a column there. This is just getting the first value where the project ID is equal to the selected value in the data set. And then I'm using the selected value for the task URL here as well. You could use a minimum if you wanted to. So we have a switch again, and we're saying if the task name is in scope, return the task link. If the bucket name is in scope, which I guess doesn't apply anymore because I don't, I used to have this as a grouping. I took it out. So let me take that rule out. And then if the project name is in scope, it returns the project link, otherwise returns blank. So when I add this, it looks like a link to start. So first things first, you need to make sure that your data category on hyperlinks is of the type web URL. It probably won't be by default. So just select the measure you just created and make sure that it has the data category of web URL. And then you wanna choose how it's displayed. So that's in the matrix settings. If you search for URL, there's a section for URL icon. You can turn it on for values like that. What I like to do with these link columns is make them super narrow with the name so that you can squeeze it in. And the matrix won't let you, by the way, um, hyperlink text. So with the table visual, you can have, say, your task name or project name or whatever be a hyperlink. In the matrix, it won't let you do that. You can only use the icon. So I'm just going to rename this field to link. And that'll let me squish it pretty narrow without making the header super tall. So the start and end date follows the exact same concept as as the last modified date. So I'm not gonna go over those in depth. I will say that you wanna use min for the start date and max for the end date when you're doing your selection for the project level. And the completed effort summarization works pretty similar to all of these again. So I'm gonna use variables again this time. This is just a ratio of the completed hours to total hours. This one doesn't have any filters on it. It's linked to another measure. And then at the project level, I'm doing kind of the same thing that we were doing for our count measure where we are counting for all tasks and then applying back on the thing we have selected from the project table, which is the particular project. And then we're returning both conditionally again. So you can see that this is repeated many times in different ways. So let's talk about the grand total at the bottom. So the way we wrote our measures, they're returning blank down here, which honestly, I would want that for this particular data set. If you want a different behavior, you can target that. So all of our measures have been using is in scope. And essentially, if you have a case for each of your row levels in your matrix, if none of those are in scope, you're probably looking at the grand total, right? So you could write some other text into your else here. If you wanted it to show something else, you put a measure there. If you wanted to show a measure, just keep in mind that your measures have a data type. So don't be telling it to show text if it's a numeric calculation in some context. So this is how it's showing up down here. I do see people sometimes use has one value as the check for this instead. But what I've found is that there are times, particularly when you're working with small data sets or with narrow filters, where you naturally have one value and it ends up showing that output when you don't want it to. I like checking the scopes instead, personally. So my percentage of effort completed follows the same exact principles we've been talking about where it checks the context and then does one measure for one thing, one measure for another thing. You can format this with data bars also. So context menu, conditional formatting, data bars. For percentages, this is zero and one. And then set a color. If your matrix row is double tall, it looks kind of weird. So it's using, it's the project name is a problem here. So if I expand this out, it turns off. I think there's a wrap setting for the row headers. Yeah. So you could also just turn this off for the row headers and that would keep it from expanding out your row. All right. That is everything I have for you today. Thank you for watching and I hope you have a great day.